Okay, we're back. Hey, we're jumping into a conversation about keyword research that will change your entire perspective of, of how to actually perform that particular step, as well as a number of other things inside of digital marketing. We're focusing on behavior marketing, and that's the goal as we talk to Tony Vary. So welcome back to The Edge. Welcome to the show again, Tony. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thanks, thanks for tolerating our news segment. <laughs> It's the best new segment I've heard in a while. <laughs> Even with the... St- with the, uh, the, the uh, yeah, just, just get... Let's, next segment. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Nothing takes your interest yeah. like light stool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did it! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, Tony, um, before anything else, uh, can you give us a snapshot of your day? Sure. Uh, so uh, I wake up. Yay. I make coffee, and uh, after I drink a cup of coffee, I get down to work, and it's usually, um, you know, working with uh, various clients, but uh, more at a foundational level mm-hmm. uh, of search. So um, what does that really mean, I guess? Uh, so in terms of a foundation, really just creating that solid base uh, to build bigger strategies on. So a lot of the folks that I work with um, really come to me in various states of foundational okayness. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way to say it. So uh, yeah, and and keyword research and it is a a larger part of what I do in order to build those strategies up and solidify a foundation. You know, I really didn't introduce you correctly. Let's let's uh, get you out there and, and, and let everybody know who you are. Uh, you are the founder and owner of uh, Dreamfire Digital, correct? That's right, yeah. And uh, you also have had a number of speaking engagements. We actually saw you at SMX West uh, 2016 this year. Um, what other things are, are you involved in? Uh, you know, that, that's really it, just, uh, you know, trying to get more critical mass for uh, the small companies that I started, and um, that that's really it. And then, you know, obviously, uh, conference speaking uh, mm-hmm. when I can. Yep. So, yeah. Very cool. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Um, w- well, where is, uh, I'm sorry, where is Dreamfire located? Uh, we're in Dallas. Dallas oh, very cool. Excellent. So, question is uh, to you, uh, what, make you my, what made you interested in the SEO industry uh, originally? Oh, wow. Jeez. Taking me back. That's, uh, yeah. so that's uh, about 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, so it all it all started uh, with a dream. No, not really. <laughs> not even a little. Um, so I was, uh, I was a public school teacher in Milwaukee yep. uh, for about three years. And uh, having gone, so I went overseas. Uh, so it's actually, I'm a veteran, so we were at uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and when I came back, uh, I, teaching just wasn't feeling where it was at for mm-hmm, me mm-hmm. anymore, uh, and my brother-in-law had a digital account management position um, with for a real estate company, mm-hmm. and so we started you know, they're building websites. Oh, man, uh, you started with real estate? Enough, oh. There was a, a gentleman sitting next to me, yeah. uh, uh, sort of a, a mole man, if you will, very isolated, very quiet. Uh, and I, I, so I befriended him, and I was like, what do you do all day? He's like, I do SEO. And uh, I had never heard of it. He sort of showed me the ropes and, and got me involved, and the rest is pretty much history. Uh, so i took what he told me and started applying it everywhere I went. Oh, well, that, 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 that's actually uh, the story of a, a lot of individuals who are in this industry for this long a time. Is, I mean, it's almost some from necessity as well, because nobody else, nobody was even doing this uh, back then. So uh, that's, that's a great startup story. Hey, I did want to say uh, I, I direct thank you for your service in the Army. You've been in the U.S. You, you were in the, you served two tours or uh, eight years in the uh, Armed, uh, U.S. United States Army. I just wanted to thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. And on top of that, being a teacher, that's also pretty darn cool as well. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a that's a uh, a a, a, uh, a unique series of talents right there, <laughs> yeah. for darn sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's as challenging as it is rewarding. Um, 
So, but I bet it, it takes a very special personality to be able to do that for a very long time. Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I think that also gave you some uh, getting into the ownership realm of a digital agency. Those two respective areas of your of your history do come back into play, do they not? Uh, whenever you're running a firm as well as needing to talk and communicate to your to your clients? Oh, absolutely. E- education is everything. So, uh, you know, the teaching background absolutely helps yep. um, in terms of educating. So being able to take, you know, fairly complex um, ideas and, mm-hmm. and break them down into something that's pretty digestible. That's right. I mean, I mean, we like we we see ourselves regularly in that space because, I mean, digital marketing is still elusive, and for companies that that need to be out there, they they still have a, have rudimentary understanding at best. Some a heck of a lot of myths and misunderstanding, especially inside oh, of yeah. in, especially inside of SEO. Um, and I mean, you, you have to find you find yourself having to do this before anything else is getting them straightened out, squared up, going, this is real. <laughs> it does work, right? And right. you need to work in an omni-channel perspective to actually get success. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think, I'm not sure I'm fighting that as much as I was mm-hmm. maybe five or six years ago with uh, this sort of black magic shroud over the entire industry. Like, whatever it is you do right. is always voodoo, and I don't believe a word you say. Yeah. Uh, Right, so yeah. I, I don't think I'm fighting that as much anymore. I think uh, it's become, or it as an SEO or even search has become mainstream enough that people buy into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right; there's still there's still a lot of education. Um, you know, I think, you know, where a lot of us are uh, is, is way far ahead, and everyone's like, well, you know, let's just put a lot of keywords on the page, right? That's what we're supposed to do. I read a blog post, you know, last week that said if I just put it on a hundred times, we're going to be fine. No, what? So, what you saw? You found a blog post that actually said that? No, no. <laughs> As an example. Oh yeah, gotcha. <laughs> we we need to come down like a, a ton of bricks. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, you're 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 not seeing that more often. Are you finding that with the clientele that you have? Are you finding that they are now in another space where maybe they've gotten burned by uh, a particular digital marketing? agency prior to getting connected with you and having maybe a different conversation uh, nowadays? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say an agency as much as it is sort of individuals who come across and pose as experts, I would say. Uh, I think that's mostly who I'm finding. Um, It's just someone who's like, yeah, well, you know, we worked with someone for about six months. We fed them a whole bunch of money. Yeah, and yeah. now we're in the same place we were six months ago, except X amount poorer. Right, uh, right. There's nothing right. to show for it. Yeah, completely understand. Um, yeah, you know, we have a small agency here in Indianapolis, and we we do find ourselves in that space where somebody got burnt, or more importantly, uh, maybe some a massive amount of uh, links were purchased by you know by that particular agency or individual. And we're doing right. heck of a lot of the cleanup before anything else, before you can really start doing some good content yeah. and, and, and inbound marketing, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, that that is a, a relic from years past, right? So it's not that links are unimportant, uh, just the way that they were being acquired, not in the most tasteful way. Right. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Well, you, we, you, you spoke at SMX... Uh, 2016 this year uh, at SMX West in San Jose, and yours was a key presentation that we we were really interested in. Can you tell us uh, some of your thoughts about SM- SMX this year? Yeah, uh, it was great. Uh, first off, I mean, uh, Third Door and Danny and team always put on just an amazing conference, period. So uh, very honored to be there, of course. Um, you know, I, again, I think it's something uh, that I saw overall is the convergence to intent behavior mm-hmm. uh, and, and sort of, dare I say it, holistic marketing, as, as awful a term as that could be. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, that's what it, it's really that convergence. I think it's yeah. finally hitting more mainstream. No, I think, um, so. I think and you're right. So everyone is trying to weave all of your different channels together um, from a starting point, and depends on which starting point you're starting from. 
No, you're absolutely right. We saw a, a diverse crowd out there this year. Um, you gave a presentation uh, about using search science for for keyword research, and uh, uh, how uh, can you can you summarize a uh, the, the the response of the crowd from uh, from your presentation before we kind of unpack it a little bit? Yeah, I, I thought it was it was pretty good. I, I talked to a few people afterward, mm -hmm. and uh, they seemed really uh, happy with some of the insights that were in there. So uh, I was. I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't sure uh, if if it was going to go over very well or uh, or not. Really, to be honest with you, I was more expecting to fail than actually uh, do anything good. <laughs> That's not the way to go into a presentation. <laughs> come, come on. <laughs> do you were expecting to fail because you thought people weren't ready yet for what you had to say? Maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe it was, uh, you know, a little bit out there. And it kind of is a little bit out there. I think once you actually walk through the whole thing, mm -hmm. it makes sense. Um, and, and honestly, it, it's not a quick fix. So what I was proposing up there takes hours and hours of time. It's not a tool. Yep. It's not something you can just drop in and, and then have answers get spit out to you. So, I mean, like, it takes elbow grease. No, absolutely. And, and you know, unfortunately... Uh, Inside of uh, inside of digital marketing, that is some tough stuff, and and I hate to say it, the nature of, a part of the nature of uh, marketers they they want to get some quick things done as opposed to the deep work and the hard work that that comes uh, into play. Uh, it's it's tough, but at the same time, that's that's what you got to do if you want to see success, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, honestly, that yeah, I mean. Uh, it's just at the pace at which business is moving, mm -hmm. we we all don't have that much time to invest in something like that. So if there was a tool that could do it, that would be great. Um, but I just don't. I've not found one yet. Mm -hmm. Nope. And, uh, the, <laughs> you <kept that> right. <laughs> Neither have we. <laughs> and we've been looking. Uh, what uh, a key concept inside of your presentation was getting inside the consumer's head using observable and quantifiable search data to discover consumers' needs, intents, and search behavior. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's something that I just stumbled across over over the years. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, you know as much keyword research as we've all done. Um, that I started noticing patterns. I started seeing uh, just a, a lot of how these behaviors started panning out over larger categories, mm -hmm. right? So um, I just, you know, one day just started plugging in and dumping out and then putting reams of these things together and, and started watching segments and behaviors kind of fall out of it. So uh, these behaviors are talking about, did you start finding, I want to use the word archetypal, did you start seeing some... Uh, beyond service uh, uh, terms, that actually more uh, the consumer behavior of steps in inside of of how to process the need for something in the pursuit of a particular solution is that is that uh, uh, what you what you started to see there? Um, I wouldn't say archetypal, not in the Jungian sense anyway. Sweet, um, but. Sorry. It's, no, that's great. No, I appreciate I it. Say <laughs> you did. I, liked it. I don't know what you guys oh, are talking nice. about. He, he knocked it out of the park. Awesome. Well, that's what I do. So <laughs> you get lucky. Um, I, I would say they're more personas, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, you can see uh, personas kind of develop and, and see their way stitch through an entire consumer journey, right? So, mm -hmm. like, if you're looking, maybe let's just take any food product. Just think of a food product. Fruit. Um, Strawberries. Sure. It's great. <laughs> Right. That's just, right. So, as long as we're talking about strawberries, let's keep doing that. Um, <laughs> so, th as long as we're talking about them, so there's someone searching for strawberries. There's yep. going to be a natural segment to those types of searches. That's right. Uh, so you'll see someone searching for non-GMO, organic, all natural, right? So, like, there's a swath, everything around strawberries, but there's a swath that runs through it that's a very natural, all the way through, and that's a persona, right? And mm -hmm. then there's there's another segment around strawberries that someone might be gross. Uh, USA <laughs> grown or right. Or uh, yeah. People who are like strawberry suck. <laughs> strawberry haters. I'm sitting right across right. from one. <laughs> no, you're, ab right. you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So out of that comes, um, some more predictive type of, uh, uh, research that you can do to deepen that understanding of the different keywords that they're, that they're uh, exploring, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So what are some of the tools that you use to, to be able to start build, building these keyword personas, per se? I, I did that in one sentence. <laughs> yes, you did. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so a lot of the free tools, really. There's there's no paid tool that I really use. Mm-hmm. Um, so using Keyword Planner from Google, yep. uh, Google uh, Insight. So that's another one. Um, and... Amazon predictive search, uh, and then Google itself, uh, their their predictive search or Google Instant. Okay. So just a combination of all of those tools. Excellent. Well, uh, can you uh, can you share any uh, to our listeners any of the out of the box ways to think about the keyword discover discovery or, or creative methods you use in in that keyword research that go above and beyond standard practice because. Those are the different uh, wells of, of information that you can get. Uh, you're still you still have to take what you're processing, and, and that next that next level is is really the mo- the more interesting pieces of how you sew that together. Or what type of creative ways do you actually uh, 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 start exploring the keyword research? Sure. Um, so, you know, I, I usually start with insight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and drop in a couple of those key head terms right away uh, and just see what it looks like, what the trend looks like. Um, but more interesting to me is, is when you get all the way down to the, the bottom of that insights page and looking at rising and top searches. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's going to give you a clue as to where it's all headed, right? And then the topics that to the left of that. So that gives you an idea of what that whole keyword is about how people are looking for it, what they're doing, um, and sort of extracting that information. I I mean, you can take a screenshot of it, you can write it down on a notepad, whatever you've got to do, um, and take some of that, and then move over to the Keyword Planner. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's it's really that easy. And then this is the elbow grease part. So just start dumping in uh, two, three head terms. Uh, Maybe take a mid-tail term, Mm -hmm. if that's kind of where the category is headed. Yep. And drop them in. Um, and don't, and, and like I said, uh, at SMX, I wouldn't dilute that with anything else. So I think that's really a key part that a lot of people are going to forget is don't mix up your terms. So like if you're looking in this case for strawberries, <clears throat> um, just, just put in strawberries. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't mess around with blueberries or fruit in general or organic fruit. Like if strawberries is your category and that's your thing, just look at strawberries. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, and then when, yeah. when you, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no you're absolutely. Right. You, you got you, you. can get yourself so scattered with all the what ifs and all the different channels, uh, mm-hmm. thinking that you can, you can pull in other value. You know, you got to you got to find your corridor and stay in it. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know that's where the magic really happens, and where some of your ahas might come out of uh, is once you take that 800 that they give you back. It's just start slicing that 800 into as many segments as you can. Like, what patterns do you see falling out of it? Are people concerned about price? Mm-hmm. Uh, and like I said, like we talked about a, a little bit earlier with the natural swap. Like, you are going to see that. People are going to be looking for natural strawberries or organic or non-GMO. Um, so, you know, just putting those segments all the way out and, and finding out what people are doing around strawberries. And, it's, and then, then start rebucketing. I think that's the next real step that I didn't really talk about, but mm-hmm. um, it's really what I do is like once you, because you can't come to a client with 15 different segments and say like, well, there's a segment who's really concerned about this and that and this other thing, and it's just too small right. uh, to be able to target really. So then rebucketing into larger themes, I guess, if you can, you know, limit it from three to five larger themes, mm-hmm. uh, then you're good to go. So you've got your, your, your planning strategy and your content that comes from that. There's going to be uh, yeah. multiple types of content to support those themes, right? So it's not just different pages holding different keywords. You're really really talking about developing content around a, a path through that website. And there are going to be different types of consumables, right? Uh, the the yeah. a blog piece, a structural piece of, of site content, even a video or, or or different things that can help connect that to that user. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even going a step above just content is those segments can really inform your site architecture. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> and that you know that that would be winning the game at at step one is. And obviously, it's a tall order. It's a big ask of anyone to say, like, well, you know, based on what we found, like, your site is engineered all wrong, mm-hmm. so we should rebuild it. Um, so, yeah, I, but that, that can help inform your site architecture. And uh, the content, you're absolutely right, right? So now you know what kind of pieces of content you need to build, or at least thematically mm-hmm. what you can build. Right. Um, you know, based on a client's budget, you could build a video, you could build infographics, you could do blog posts. Or any number of things. So, yeah. Um, you, you talked about semantic targeting. Talk to us a little bit about that. Right. Uh, so, semantics, and then that, I think that gets really back to hummingbird and mm-hmm. um, everything else. Uh, so, if they're looking for, yeah, that semantic term, right? It's secondary, tertiary type terms that are connected. And I think that really goes back to uh, even the new segment uh, about pancreatic cancer. Right. So, yes, some people are bold enough to type it in, uh, but most people are sort of tiptoeing around that larger topic, right? They're saying, well, I've got dark urine. I could either be dehydrated or it could be this. Um, so the same is true with the way you would be doing this type of research or the way you'd want to sort of engineer your content is, yes, we're looking at the head term, but there are things that are closely related to that. And so you can pull that out of uh, not only your keyword research, but even looking at the search themselves Mm -hmm. um, and seeing what's in that um, related searches section. So not all, it's not a hundred percent that they're using the exact same term. They might be uh, transforming that term in a different way using a semantic variation. Um, And so capturing some of those and sort of peppering them in and working them into your content as well to sort of uh, create a very relevant uh, topic, right? Like you would own a lot of authority around that because you're connecting multiple dots instead of, uh, you know, punching a hole through the wall and saying, this is about strawberries, right? You're saying this is all about strawberries. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, We certainly want to take the next the next step in here is to actually uh, talk a, a bit more about behavior marketing and, and behavior mindset. So uh, let's stay let's stay tuned. Take a break here, real quick. And then Tony, you wrote a blog post that I was really interested in speaking to you about. Uh, it was the next paradigm in search marketing is human. That was the uh, the, the title of the document, and it kind of pairs up to uh, what we're talking about here from keyword research. Um, you know, the keywords keyword research has really evolved. Um, if you will, if you if you do the due diligence like you're talking about, otherwise, um, it's still rudimentary. Even the, even though the the data tool sets are available, and they and they and even with Keyword Planner, it breaks it into more more uh, you know packaged and channeled uh, categorized type of content. You're still getting it's still rudimentary just getting keyword terms and and volumes right well i mean yeah. the 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 next chapter in 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 really marketing we firmly believe uh here at strategics is the is the behavior side of marketing where it's the it's the co- sure. consumer's journey and and uh and doug you're you're giving a presentation hi doug how you doing <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> um, Doug was all, is, is is or will be or has depending on when we air the show, uh, giving a, a presentation about the consumer's currently. journey. You're currently presenting right now. Um, I'm yelling at the apartment building. <laughs> oddly enough, um, but it, but but content revolves around the need for content and the, intu- the intuitive nature that I get something that is that is useful for my pursuit, however I'm actually going after it. So there's so many different places where uh, a user is traveling, and you know we, we, we understand the basic concepts of user awareness and pain, you know, pain point awareness moving into solution understanding all the way through to a transaction. But, um, I mean... Content still, I mean, in content marketing and, and sites still need to evolve to that level of understanding, uh, that, that type of structured flow approach, because people can come in from all different ways, all different stages in their behavior, 
to your website, mm -hmm. and if there's if there's only structural content that's meeting a keyword to a keyword concept, and not the user's intent, right? Then you're right. not you're not meeting them where they're at. You're there. They have to decipher whether or not you're a good fit for their pursuit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 that's really the trick, right? So that's the hardest. That's the hardest part of, of mapping toward uh, a consumer behavior mm -hmm. and their journey, right? So not, you, this really goes back to not just building content for content's sake and not trying to rank. Right. Um, and, and that's really what it is. I mean, every piece of content you build, yes, should be targeted. And yes, it should be using you know, semantic variations inside that content, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be useful, right? So not only is it there to serve so that you show up, uh, but when you do show up, what calls to action have you placed? What type of information is on that page that's going to help them uh, further fulfill that need uh, and not just bounce, really? And just say, oh, great, yeah, I land on a page that has it uh, in the in the H1 and it's in the title tag, and then it's just a bunch of gibberish, right? Right. So uh, that's that's really the trick. Um, and building, you know, again, I think going back to the conversation a little bit earlier, which is what type of content is going to fit that need? Is an infographic make the most sense at that point? Right. Uh, is it a video? Depending on what you're selling, do you have to show this product in action? Um, and this is where I think uh, all the disciplines are really starting to get blended together. Um, yes, everyone has a, a specialty. UX, content, so on and so forth, um, but bringing all of those together to build the exact right pieces of content that you need. At the right time. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So it's it's not just content, it's also design, you know, and, yeah. and, it's the, and, and graphics have to walk right hand in hand with the structure uh, that you're putting together, the content, the persuasive content and whatever levels they're at, right? I, I absolutely, yeah. I think one of the things that uh, companies, in, in my opinion, get wrong, and, and we've been moving away from it with our clients as well, is, is you know, for a long time there with search, it was all the top level and evergreen content and just, you know, that production phase of just post, 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 and try to get articles out. And yeah. really what people are doing from a behavior standpoint is they're doing the research on online. And whether you're out, we're going to talk about this in the marketing tech blog segment, but whether, even if even if you're doing outbound marketing, if mm -hmm. you're doing sales to people, what are they first doing? As soon as they get off that call, the first thing they're doing is doing a deep dive of research mm -hmm. to, to find out about your company, your reputation, the projects that you've worked on, the clients that you've worked with. And if all they see is this crap top level content right. on your site, there's nothing there that's an indicator of trust and, and authority for them you know, to dig any deeper. And so that's, you know, and, and I feel like the search engines are always a great reflection of the needs of behavior, you know, the needs yeah. of the consumer or the, or the business that's doing the research is uh, Google's keeping track of that. That's why pages are, you know, thick now with content and multimedia and everything else is because people, by the time you get to a site, you want to find and do a deep dive on something and get the information you need. You don't, you don't want to just, a uh, a couple sentences in a sales pitch to try to drive you to a conversion. I, I wholeheartedly agree. And, and I'd like to sort of go back to the point that you made that it, it's all about, or possibly was all about post, 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 post. Um, I mean, I honestly don't see that behavior changing all that much. Uh, and right. I, I'd be interested to see what, what kind of behaviors you're seeing, but I, I still have people telling me like, Oh, so we need to post, you know, uh, you know, one a day, right? 30 times this month? Well, I'm like, it, no, you don't. Not if it's not going to be great content, you don't. Just uh, did you think there. through that? Because well, if you're only going to write 300 words about craft, then, like, save it. Let's, well, not only let's, that, uh, but, uh, you know, by the, and by the time you finish a year, you've written about that one piece of evergreen content 13 times. And mm -hmm. so, so at the end of the year, yeah. you've got 13 articles that are all crap, all competing with each other yeah. with none of them ranking, <laughs> you know? And so that's what we always tell people is, and we've seen the, I mean, we've done it for our clients where we've taken, 
you know, 14 pages of their site and pushed it into a single page, redirected mm-hmm. everything. And we always pick the page that has the best ranking. Sure. But we thicken that content up, try to add a video, try to add some diagrams, you know, and really make it a juicy, juicy page. Mm-hmm. And what happens is skyrockets, mm-hmm. you know. and Yeah. And and that's that's how we prove it to clients, you know. Absolutely, um, the customer journey, uh, and I'm ref- uh, reflecting back to your slide share uh, from SMX. Uh, I mean, it starts with the reviews and evaluation. Oh, actually, it starts with a consumer needs state, then research and discovery, yeah. then purchase consideration, then purchase, and then reviews and evaluation. And basically, by the time they're at the reviews and evaluation, they they are a brand loyalist. They've 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 uh, gone through the entire process there, so uh, you know th- even that needs uh, caretaking and 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 uh, not only communication email wise, but also understanding of what how you take care of your clients. But I mean that is the 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 preeminent re- uh, uh, consumer journey that we understand. Um, yeah. How how has this been received by your your clients as you start uh, presenting that and putting putting uh, putting things uh, not only on their website but also interacting with their sales team? Um, you know, honestly, I, I think everyone likes it because it's it's a nice diagram, mm-hmm. um, but it's a very simple version of it's just something to put on paper, right? Like yeah. I, I think in general that's how a consumer journey goes. We all eventually hit those mile markers. Um, but uh, truly, everyone's bouncing around, right? Like you might start at research and discovery and instantly bounce to a review and then bounce right back and bounce over to pre-purchase consideration and bounce mm-hmm. back to discovery. Um, so, I mean, it's a very messy, it's a very messy journey, right? And, and I think mobile only complicates that. Um, so now it can just be doing a whole bunch of things at once. Uh, but I think it's a nice representation, even if it is, uh, a bit simple uh, of how that needs to go, and and I think it's rather well received, right? Like it gives us at least um, some funnels that we can hit, uh, and this is you know the type of content we really want to build for someone who's sort of in that research mode. Um, you know, this is what the type of content we need to write on that page because mm-hmm. this is what they're looking for. Uh, but then you know, true to what we were just talking about, is now coupling that with uh, a call to action or layering on like I'm glad you found us here's why we're great now you should get going into our purchase funnel right right right, right. now I, I, I yeah, this 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 whole concept is some somewhat new to to uh, to clients and you know you, you need to structure things in such a way that you can under, that they can understand how intuitively they sell to their to their audience right and that it needs to be Fa- it needs to be found as structure and a, and a, it's persuasion marketing, behavior marketing, um, mm-hmm. taking them steps through the through the process here. So, um, how uh, what kind of successes have you seen as you start putting uh, those type of keyword structures or that keyword research into play with that level of, of persuasion marketing? Uh, they're pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to say phenomenal, mm-hmm. um, but I, we definitely see gains. Um, and, and, and they're pretty good, right? Like, you know, anywhere from 25 to 30, 40% better than they were either six months before or a year before. Right. So, uh, it starts working. I mean, it just, it, it's a slow rolling ball. Uh, right. And, and of course there are quick wins and it's really, like I said, it depends on the level of foundational readiness you're at when we, we first start. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's lots of quick wins, right? Like if, if your title tags and your metadata is a mess. Um, you know, start there, right? That's a real fast, quick win, and yep. you'll see some really good games. Um, but there's the dangerous double edge of that. It's like, wow, you know, oh, we shot up 56% from where we were just even two months ago. Yes, yes, you did. So I can expect that every month going forward, we're just going to keep doubling. Well, no. No, you're not. Now now the hard work comes in. Now it's where we start putting strategy and content and, right. and doing all of this research, right? So... Uh, but for the most part, yeah, all of this works pretty, pretty good. And it, and it makes sense, <laughs> you know, yeah. at, at the end of it. And, and that's and that's the kind of the end of your your blog post here is that uh, it actually what what you're talking about the human side of search term search marketing, 
you're getting past all right. the, the flotsam jetsam of all the key words that don't really show intent. You get savvy, you get smart, smarter, and you focus on what your <laughs> consumers are actually wanting at, at particular stage they're in. Then you're actually matching that pers- that pursuit, and all of a sudden you, they start falling in line a, a heck of a lot better than than trying to decipher. Okay, I got here now. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Exactly right. Yeah, I mean, I think, and again, I mean, if you start reading even uh, things with Google, like you see these micro moments pop mm-hmm. up all the time, right? So that's Google's biggest thing at this mo- at, at this time is micro moments, like capturing right. them at the right place, the right time with the right content. Uh, and that's exactly what I think, you know, SMX really encapsulated mm-hmm. and, uh you know, where, where everyone's going to have to eventually head uh, because, you know, the, the game of just writing a bunch of content to rank and it doesn't do anything else is has been dead. Uh, but if it, you don't think it's dead, just wait six months yep. and then it will be dead. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I, I really enjoy these conversations and, I, and, and we certainly... Uh, implore you to, to, to watch Tony and, and what he's talking about. He's really active in Twitter. Um, good information that he's always putting out there, and we w- we certainly wish you the best at, uh, in your pursuits in Dallas. I do have a couple questions here, last questions, that sure. that uh, are, are not some of the deep diving inside of uh, in, inside of uh, user intent marketing. Uh, one, one question, actually, from uh, Nate, our uh, marketing director. Uh, his wife is a teacher, a freshman in English. Uh, freshman English. He, he says, first off, huh. bravo to you for putting up uh, with high schoolers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because high, he says high school teachers are actually more brave than he is. Um, w- with the way our industry is changing and expanding, do you think high schools and universities should start more curriculums based around the digital space and the SEO, SEM subject matter? It's not such a niche I- environment anymore. I, you know what? I, I think there's already a trend toward it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell you um, it's not as in-depth as I would love, that's for sure, but I think um, mm-hmm. SMU down here in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, but it's the, and now it's a graduate-level program. I don't think it's actually seat down into sort of a, a BA uh, yet. So the MBA courses do have a track, I believe, uh, for digital marketing. So, oh, um, cool. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's starting to creep in there, but I, I really think NARC needs to be uh, part of a just a general BA curriculum. Yeah, yeah, it has to happen. Yeah, it I, absolutely does. It's, it's it's evolving. That's for darn sure. We're seeing it, but you know, I, I really like to see it at the high school level. Uh, you know. More so than the college level, I, I because a lot of times the high schoolers. They, I mean, we're seeing it. We're working with high schoolers regularly, um, and they're on it. They, they're on it more than than we ever give them credit for. And understanding new media and understanding that curriculum inside of high schools is even more separated from what's contemporary sure. than mm-hmm. even even the colleges. College, yeah. That uh, you know, yeah, grabbing a hold of, of kids and being able to show them the the digital publishing channel that it's not coding. Mm. It's not just knowing photoshop it's a whole nother area that they can they can they can understand that's that's got to get them early and, and train them on the right path there yeah no absolutely that makes a ton of sense and i think that's a great way to go um yeah that's what i would do it yep well, okay, another another random uh, uh, point here from Tom here uh he, un- he understands that you're graduating from the Dallas Comedy House this month i am yes yeah, uh, June nineteenth. What do you do at the comedy house? Is it just an improv? Thing? It is improv. So I've been taking improv for the the last year, and uh, I am finally graduating now. Say something <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> Say something funny. <laughs> and go. Strawberries and <laughs> peanut butter pie. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. All right, I had one other question here. I don't think Aaron will ask it. Ah, so yeah, go ahead. All right. So I saw on your your slide deck there at SMX West <laughs> that you're a comic nerd. So I wanted to. Aaron, yes. Aaron's a big Batman fan. Uh huh. So I want. Okay. So I'm staring at you as you're asking this question. That's why I'm looking yeah. off to the side <laughs> as I'm asking this question. Yep. Do you consider Batman uh, a real superhero or not? <clears throat> I do. You do. He's a real superhero. He's he real. is. He may be a rich 
uh, spoiled punk, but he is a superhero. <laughs> I, I'll double down on this. I think he's more of a hero than any of the other ones with superpowers because he's the most vulnerable. Oh, dear. Right? Jesus. Okay. He's and, pretty vulnerable. And, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, you don't have super strength. I mean, come on. And he's taught himself so many skills and so many sciences. Well, I mean, I mean, literally, Superman's a moron. They got drum, drop kicked to a planet that happens to have a, a yellow sun that gives them strength. I mean, <laughs> but the best part of the question is the second part, Tom. Yeah, so I was, I was, I wanted your thoughts on uh, Ben Affleck as the <laughs> oh, new Batman. No, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I just couldn't do it. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> sorry, I don't think it was that bad. Actually, <sighs> I would say that. Um, you know, Michael Keaton is probably one of my favorite there you go. Batman. Yep, there you go. Um, yep, 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 with, with, a, with a Christian Bale uh, coming up the, uh, the second, le- second, le- second level there. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we'll completely ignore Val Kimmer, Kilmer and uh, and uh, George Clooney. They don't exist to me. He was the one with the nipples, right? Stop it! <laughs> it was, yes. Uh, I believe Clooney was the one with the uh Tom the said the N-word. <laughs> The one you can say. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. Wow. And Doug didn't say it of all no, people. I didn't even get involved in that conversation. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't me this week. <laughs> well, Tony, tell us how we can. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm a loyal fan of yours now, Tony. Thank you for, for say, saying it the right way. And well, you're very welcome. I tell you what, we're going to talk later. Tom. <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, All right. how do how do we how do we find you uh, online? Give us uh, give us some uh, websites to go to. Uh, well, I'm on Twitter, and that would be at Tony Perry. Uh, the spelling will be on there, so yep. don't worry. Yep. Um, and then the the site is uh, Dreamfire uh, Digital Yep. yep. Anything else? Anything uh, that that uh, it's out in your space that you want to point to? Uh, any upcoming speaker engagements or or some uh, some interesting things uh, coming your way? Well, if you're in Dallas and you like uh, live local comedy, June nineteenth uh, at seven o'clock, we will be uh, graduating and doing our showcase. So, if you're listening in Dallas, that's a great place to to be. Yeah. So, you improv your gra- your graduation commencement. That's correct. We're going to do a showcase for one hour, and then we are going to walk across the stage and get a diploma. How about that? Yeah. What can you improv during that period of time? That's pretty much structured right there. I'm sure you guys will come up with something, right? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Well, Tony, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much for deep diving into some keyword concepts, consumer behavior, and understanding buyer intent uh, to, a, to a degree. Uh, we really want to share this, this type of information regularly to our listeners because that's absolutely where content marketing is, is, is critical. Um, th- again, thank you very much, and we'll certainly be watching you. And at any point in time you want to come back on the show, just let us know, okay? Oh, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Watch out for those light stools. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Oh, oh, wow. Every every segment. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and uh, Tony, uh, I have to say this. Promote the show uh, that you're on. Otherwise, we won't have you on again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, there's, there's, there, there's, some, there's, a, there's an inside track there, Tony. <laughs> You best tweet. We're just telling you. You best tweet. All righty.